This video is an update of the Alex Pup project in May 2020. Alex Pup is a version of Puppy Linux with the LXDE desktop environment. And there are three main versions of LXPUP. Um, there's LXPUP Bionic, which is based on Ubuntu Bionic Beaver. There's LXPUP SC 32 bit and LXPUP SC 64 bit, both of which are based on Slackware Current. This particular update is going to concentrate on system updates. We're going to look at how to update the system, how to update the kernel, how to update the web browser, and finally, which isn't really an update, but how to change the system from LXDE to LXQT. All of the uh, software for LXPUP is, is obtainable from SourceForge and this particular SourceForge.net projects LXPUP. Okay, if we um, first of all look at the system that we're running on, we'll see that it is was built on the 1st of January this year. So it's quite an old system this one. And in fact if we look at the the ISO it's the plus zero version of the ISO. And it's a frugal install that means that rather than taking over the whole disk or the whole partition, all of the components of LXPUP are contained within a directory and consist of four SFS files. The main one is the puppy SFS file, which is the, the system file. The Z drive, which has the kernel in it. But there are, and then there are two other ones, an F drive, which has all the firmware for the kernel, and an A drive, which has the web browser for LXPUP. There's also an LXPUP SC save, and this is the persistent sa uh, storage for the system, where all the changes that are made are, are saved. So this is what's called a frugal install. It's only frugal in the sense that it minimises the amount of disk space um, and memory used for the system. It's an absolutely full system as far as the facilities are concerned. So just looking at the uh, uh, system information. We can see that the kernel for this build is kernel 546. It's a 64 bit kernel but a 32 bit system. Um, that's slightly unusual, but it works uh, perfectly well. It's 2001 version of LXPUP SC. Um, the panel is LX panel, the window manager is open box. Um, and if we look further down, we'll see that some of the components, glibc is at 2.30 and OpenSSL is 1.1.1D. I'm showing you these because these are the things that we'll be updating during this video. Uh, 
Okay, so when we go off to Fo Source Forge, this is what we see. And we need to go to the the files section and then we're going to go into LXPUP 1903 which is where we'll see the LXPUP Bionic ISO and then if we go to the other directory we're going to see LXPUP SC and LXPUP SC64 This access of uh, SourceForge is using the built-in uh, the built-in browser which is called Light. Light is a uh, cut down version, an old cut down version of Firefox pro produced by uh, powered by Mozilla. Um, it's a small fairly capable web browser but it does need to be updated and replaced with a bigger and more capable browsers in most situations. Okay we're now going to look at LXPUP system updates which consists of three steps. First of all we download a Delta file from SourceForge. We then use that Delta file to generate a new ISO. We then open that new ISO and copy the updated SFS files into our frugal install. We go to the system update menu item where we're warned that these updates can only be applied to the original plus zero ISO. We're then taken to SourceForge where we're going to download the plus six Delta file. After the download has completed, we'll find the Delta file in the downloads folder. And we're going to cut that Delta file and move it into the same directory as the plus zero ISO. We then click on the Delta file, the new plus six ISO. Once that ISO is uh, generated, we click on it, we click on it, and we mount that image and in it we can see the SFS files that we need to update. So we move to the frugal install and for this particular update we need to um, update both the initrd and the, the puppy file. So we select those, copy them into our frugal install, we then dismount the ISO again, and we then reboot the computer. Having rebooted the computer, we can now see that we have a system that was built on the 2nd of May 2020. So we have done an update. Okay, so having done the system update, we're now going to update the LXPUP kernel. And this again consists of three steps. First of all, downloading the new kernel from uh, SourceForge. Extracting out of that kernel the two files, 
the VM Linux and the Z drive and then renaming those files and putting them into the frugal install directory. So from SourceForge we're going to go to the uh, other LXPC interims folder and we're going to download the 5614 kernel. When the download is complete the kernel will be in the downloads folder and again we're going to cut it and we're going to move it to the uh, this folder the ISO folder and then we click on the new kernel and we see that it has two files in it one called kernel minor modules and one called VM Linux and we're going to extract those into this folder and then when they're extracted when we've got We've got the kernel modules file and the VM Linux file. We're going to rename those and we're going to rename those to VM Linux and Z drive. So the Z drive one, we're just going to copy the name of the Z drive and then we're going to rename this file to the Z drive and we're going to rename this file to just VM Linux. So we've got now out of this uh, file that we've downloaded from SourceForge we've got these two files which we're going to cut from this folder and paste them into the frugal install folder. So we've now updated the kernel and again we need to do a reboot. So after the reboot we can check on the system status and I go if we go to the page that we looked at originally this bot we can see that uh, we're now running kernel 5614 which was built on the 20th of May and we can see uh, that OpenSSL due to the um, system upgrade is now at version 1.1.1G and that was bought, built on the 21st of April. So the system has been updated for both its uh, system components and its kernel. We're now going to do an update of the LXPUP web browser. There are two stages. We download a new web browser SFS file and we install the new web browser. To do this we go to the get web browser menu item where we can see that four mainstream web browsers are available to download Chromium, Firefox, Pale Moon and SeaMonkey. We'll choose Firefox and we are asked whether we want to download the SFS to either the frugal install subdirectory or to the partition that that 
um, that that subdirectory uh, exists on. We will choose the subdirectory. We can see here that that uh, Firefox.sfs file is being downloaded um, from SourceForge. This time using wget rather than the web browser. We then asked if we want to load it and we do. And uh, we can then we can then run the um, the web browser by clicking on the run. Okay, so we can now go into setup and looking at, at what SFS is loaded, and we can see that that Firefox SFS has been loaded. If we also go into the frugal install directory we'll see that the Firefox SFS is now in that directory and if we go to the internet um, menu we can see that we have a Firefox and then if we go to Firefox we can have a look at the about Firefox screen where we can see that we have downloaded version 7601 which is the 32-bit uh, version of the Firefox browser. Okay if we um, just go back to SourceForge for a minute and we go to other LXPubSC browsers we can see that in fact as well as the four standard browsers Chromium, Pale Moon, Firefox and SeaMonkey we also have other browsers in there we've got Iron, Slimjet, Vivaldi, NetSurf, Min etc. So there are other browsers available if you need them Okay, so having looked at updating the system, the kernel and the web browser, rather than doing an update, we're now going to look at, at converting LXPUP from using the LXDE um, desktop environment to the LXQT desktop environment. And to do this, we again download from SourceForge a Y drive SFS and then we reboot. So again we go off to SourceForge, we go to Other and this time we go to Desktops and we want the folder for LXQT by Y drives and we're going to download the Y drive for LXPUP SC. Having done the download, the Y drive will be in our downloads folder and again we're going to cut it and then we're going to paste it into our frugal install directory. So it's here and having put it there we are then going to reboot the system. And having rebooted, our system is now using the LXQT desktop. Um, this is LXQT 0.15.0 and it's built on top of QT 5.14.2. It's now LXQT pop on LX pop SC32 and this particular uh, version was built on the 18th of May. 
So that's LXQT version of LXPub. And finally, um, just to let you know that although this uh, update has concentrated on the um, full uh, full LXPUP ISOs, there are other ways to get LXPUP, and that in particular is to add an LXDE Y drive to various other puppies. Uh, there are Y drives available for SC Pup 32, Bionic Pup 32, uh, U Pup EF 32, SC Pup 64, Bionic Pup 64, and Fossa Pup 64. And all of those are available again from SourceForge, again from the desktops um, uh, section of the file, files on SourceForge, but this time go to the LXDE Y drive and all of those Y drives are in there. Okay, I hope that's uh, given you an update on the state of the LXPUP um, project and uh, a little bit about what's available on SourceForge to update and extend LXPUP. Bye for now.